different lighting, different everything, different scale, because now I'm at a slightly different bench, which is optimised for larger things. So we can take a look at things like this, which is a Holofane streetlight, which I bought off eBay for considerably less, probably, than they sell them to the councils. So uh, this thing appears to be modular. It has the ballast unit inside, and then it's got the uh, sections, this, these chevron-type things. And I've seen versions with one, I've seen versions with two, and they seem to stack them out in a multiple, depending on the power they want. And each one appears to be roughly about 20 watts. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 LED chips, the look of it, up behind suitable lenses for spreading the light sideways. And uh, that means that the power is roughly just over 1 watt per LED chip. So let's power this up, because if I don't power it up, you'll, you'll complain about that. So here it is. It's actually just ramped up slowly. Uh, it's a soft light. It's not too cold. Uh, it's a neutral white. Fairly warmish, actually, in relative terms. Looks pretty good. So let's open it, because that's what we're here to do. I'm hoping your picture is better than the one I'm getting. I'm, I'm looking just over there to the left, and uh, I've got a large screen, high definition monitor, but it's Chromecast I'm using to monitor this because the camera is now up so high that I, there's no way I can see the screen. I can stand up my tiptoes and see the edge of the screen for things like zoom and stuff like that, but uh, not the full thing. So uh, hopefully it is nicely focused. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, undo the uh, cover from the ballast area, or driver area is a better way to call it these days. And that's not opening all the way. That is being stopped from opening by it's hitting the, one of these light modules. Okay. A slight pet hate is the driver units, the, the covers that open down the way, because uh, it just makes it that when you're out in bright sunshine, you're tending to look up in it. And if this one, in this configuration, it's designed to sit uh, on top of a pole, but you can also turn this around and have it uh, pointing out from a pole. If it's pointing out from the pole, you can actually just loosen the uh, the grub screws in this and actually twist the thing so you can actually get more, more light into it to see what you're working on and get it into a comfortable position. But anyway, let's get that module off if I can. Ooh. And the other. Oh, that's quite easy. I'm guessing uh, they just have different, this extrusion just cut to different lengths for the number of modules they're going to have. Is this going to give us better access? And also, what are we going to see under here? Oh. What we're seeing under here is the cable coming in and uh, going into this module, it looks like it's looping through, and because you tend to wire the LEDs in series, oh, there is. Uh, I'm guessing that this is a, this link here that's just a loop, is just the end of circuit, and by putting a shunt on the end of circuit, it just means that no matter how many of these co you connect in series, uh, connect end to end, when you put that link in, they're effectively all in series, because that's how these uh, drivers tend to work. Let's uh, see if we can unplug that. Can I unplug that easily? Oh, there's a little catch. Right here, let's push that little catch down and push that out. No, no, it's not really coming out that easy. Is this waterproof? Doesn't feel like it's waterproof, but uh, oh, it might have a wee seal at the back. Okay, well, let's uh, remove the other one as well then. And that way uh, I can take this whole module off. In fact, we'll open this module So let's get that connector out and get that off completely. Nice, we'll look at that later. What we want to look at now is, is this going to open better? Yes, it's going to open much better. That's better. So uh, what we've got here is the cable coming in now. A lot of these street lights tend to, these days, have the cables pre-terminated onto them. They basically have a big roll of cables so that whoever's installing it can just chuck it down the middle of the post and then put the top on, tighten it. It's designed for fast changeover. And either one person's doing it, or if there's two of them working together, one person will hook it up at the bottom while the other person mounts it at the top and does all the hardware up. Uh, this looks like a pluggable connector, which is quite nice. 
It is a pluggable connector. It's got a couple of extra connections. Okay, so that's nice for uh, taking it out and terminating it and then plugging it back in, if, particularly if the lid's not going to open up fully with the Chevron LED module. So the cables come in here, it's got these captive cable ties as the cable restraint. It doesn't seem to have much in the way to stop it chaffing on the top here. It looks quite, as it though it was over quite a sharp edge. Mm. Uh, so we've got a light sensor here. Let's put the light sensor off. It's tightened on from underneath. Oh, I can see actually, looking at this picture. Yeah, it's being super compressed, what's being sent to the to the monitor because it doesn't like large amounts of movement. Oh, it's taking a while to catch up. Uh, so here's the light sensor, um, which has got live in and neutral in, and then the red wire is the switched out. So you've got live coming from the terminal block into the sensor. We've got neutral coming into the sensor. We've got the red going back to the terminal block to the black terminal, which is American colouring. We've got uh, a neutral wire going to the um, white terminal, again, uh, American colour, and then, then big Clive colouring, they've got the earth wire going into pink. Okay, well let's whip all these wires out then. These are just uh, pressed release connectors. Now, the orange is a special function here. This is a switch function that if you bridge this orange, I think, to neutral, you can actually enable certain functions. Oh, I appear to have drawn blood, that's okay. Uh, the driver is as is common in street lighting, it's a Philips Zitanium driver. Uh, Philips dominates the market in this area now, which is maybe a good thing because their stuff is relatively reliable. We've got two wire, oh hold on, let's, uh, let's get this driver out. So let's push these down, let's see if I can not smack my head off the camera, which I've been doing recently, it's in, a, it's in an awkward position now. So these are the push down connectors that uh, when you push the connector down, it releases it. We've got uh, the red and black is going out to the LEDs. They're quite thin wires. Again, it's low power. That's basically, you can see it moving there. That's just going through this uh, ceiling grommet. Can I take that driver out? It's just two screws, I think. Not sure how the lighting's going to be. I've got a, a sort of studio light in the room, but I've also got a, one of these big, huge cob LED panels directly above, which means this will be rubbish for uh, filming anything reflective. But for stuff like this, uh, this feels like it's potted. It should be pretty good. So I'm going to shove this out of the way over to there, if that's not going to be too reflective. And let's take a look at this. So the connections, we've got LED red and black for the LED output. We've got the NDC thermistor going in the blue and the white. We've got a gray, gray spacer, DA, DA, that's DALI. Uh, we've got two DALI connectors. Now DALI is a communication interface used in the lighting industry. It's a very, very low speed, sort of ruggedized network designed for controlling lights in office buildings. It's not like DMX where it has to update at a very high speed. It's just a very simple low speed one that's just basically turning lights and offices on and off. Um, this also has a little antenna symbol here with an arrow and it says symbol set. Simple set is Philips system for programming these drivers because now they've basically got drivers that you can uh, use a one driver to do a whole range of things because uh, these things regulate the current to the program parameters. Uh, Simple set is a system whereby when you're packaging these into the unit, either when you've put it in or even before you've put it in, you've got a pad and you can program the, on the laptop, you can program the parameters you want, put the ballast on it, uh, as soon as you touch it to it, the green light lights, it's programmed. It's contactless programming. Can I get this top off? Is it going to be totally potted in resin? It seems to be arching. And uh, let's see if a sputter. Can I prise this off? Am I going to destroy everything? Ooh. This is looking promising. It was looking promising. Oh, no, no, here we go. It's potted. Okay. 
What's it potted with? Oh, there's a bit uh, of the potting stuff breaking off. It's a kind of... That's quite a sticky... That actually feels very similar to the old pitch type potting. It's a very gummy stuff. It's not... It's actually mouldable like uh, blue tack or plasticine or Play-Doh. That's odd. That's kind of... I suppose it's a modern rubbery compound. They've got little barriers here to stop it. Oh, they're loose. So that's been potted and then it shrunk back. I wonder if the whole thing would pop out. Would the whole thing pop out? No, it's... Uh, I don't want to put too much pressure on it. There's no point anyway because uh, it's all potted in. This looks like a little thermal pad on top. It is a kind of thermal pad, is it? But it's not really going to be coupling much to the case. I wonder what that's for. Anyway, the next thing to take to bits. Now, should I take this back to the other bench? Or should we do it here? Is this a breather port? It looks like a breather port. For letting uh, air expand and contract. Well, let's try taking it apart here and we'll see what, uh, what how far we get. This could uh, take a while. It's got quite a few screws. Oh, I'm pretty sure something just shot off somewhere. My apologies for the little hints of blood there. That's what happens. The picture on the Chromecast is now just updating about once every few seconds, which is fine for uh, knowing where I am in the screen, but not that great for a... Uh, for a... Uh, yeah, it's just stopped completely now. I wonder if that's the Chromecast end or it's the, uh, the camera. I hope the camera hasn't stopped recording. Oh, the camera is kind of slowing down. That does not like that at all. Okay, I think I'm going to have to stop using the Chromecast. Uh, I'm not sure what's happening now. Yeah, something wasn't happy there. I'm not sure if the footage is going to come out without a slight jerk in it. We'll find out. It's, if it does, it does. It's just what happened. The main information is there. I'm not sure if the phone was just not able to keep up with trying to transmit a live stream of what it was recording at the same time or if the Chromecast was doing something weird. I know that early on the Chromecast did crash when I tried it, so maybe I just need to check they're all up to date. Anyway, this comes out with lots and lots of screws. Well, it's got nine screws and it took a bit of effort to get this out. It's got a fairly interesting sort of three section moulding. It's got the clear lenses, shaped lenses. It's got the plastic frame. Uh, and then it's got this sort of silicone rubber type thing and it's a composite moulding. It looks quite complex actually. Then it's got the aluminium core PCB here, which has these uh, high output LEDs on it. And the tracks, there's the series track going around and then coming back to here and the series track going around coming back to here. That's what it's looping through. And then Apart from the tracks, they've got fairly large islands of copper as well to couple the heat through the case and a really wide space around these. They've kept everything well clear of anywhere screws could go through in case moisture does get in and cause corrosion. So that's quite good. And these are uh, pressed down release connectors on what appears to be solid core wire. Is that solid core wire? Yes, it is. It's solid core. On the back, it's quite unusual because it's got a series of dots printed in a 5x5 five five, uh, matrix of 25 dots of grey heatsink compound that's applied. So they must have uh, just screen printed that on where it was needed. Um, I'm not sure why they did it that way. It's interesting. And that uh, is the whole module. And they just have a series of these modules. I wonder if you can swap the individual modules for maintenance. Unfortunately, given the nature of uh, street lighting, when anything goes faulty, like a ballast goes faulty, a driver, uh, the companies, the street lighting companies, they, they're not interested in faffing around trying to fix things. They'll just change the head and charge for a complete new head because that's what's most profitable. Here's the cheapest labour they can get and charge the highest prices they can get. Welcome to the world of street lighting. Uh, so, uh, these drivers are quite interesting because they do have the DALI input, which can also be used to program it, the DALI network, which is a bi-directional port. Uh, they also uh, use, if you 
uh, program it for the dimming function. Say for instance, one. I'm guessing that the orange input here that's a switched input can be used to activate, a, have a function that you know you could have a passive infrared sensor that when someone walks underneath the light it gently ramps up and the ramping up is done in the software inside the unit. Um, it uh, uses, it doesn't use pulsive modulation to control the output, it actually has complete control over the current going out, so it just ramps the current uh, up so you don't get any flicker at all. Very nice. Uh, but that's ultimately what you'd expect these days of good quality, pro you know, professional grades of Philips ballasts. Uh, driver, should I say. Uh, I'm guessing you can also program the characteristics for the NDC thermistor, I'm not sure about that. Never actually even considered what's involved in that. Um, yeah, it's quite a nicely made thing. It looks quite expensive. Uh, I get the feeling the company, what, from what was being sold on eBay, it was just seemed to be random odds and ends of lights, so, uh, and in old bucket trucks and things like that. So I'm guessing it was a company that no longer had a particular contract or was uh, finished a particular run. They were just getting rid of the excess stock that they weren't going to use. So I got a couple of lights, a uh, couple of different types. Uh, another thing worth mentioning about Hall of Fame is that, uh, particularly in regard to this complex multi-molding here, Hall of Fame's main claim to fame uh, was they originally st started off making lenses, I believe, for this specific type of glass and a really good optical quality. That's how they sort of ended up in the lighting industry. And I used to install a lot of Hall of Fame stuff like uh, high bay lighting type systems. So uh, it's good to see they're about. They're not owned by Philips yet. Well, I say that. Maybe they are owned by Philips now. Who, who knows? Philips went on a buying spree. They bought up uh, They bought up Strand, Verilite, Colour Kinetics, um, Genlite. They brought up all these lighting companies. Uh, I'm not sure why. I guess they're just trying to maybe harvest patents or something like that. Because Philips really are pushing with force into the LED industry when they've been doing so for quite some time. But yeah, this was interesting. It was certainly worth taking this apart.